Good morning, everybody. This is Diggs. It's another chilly one out here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about Oberon, one of the more unique units that is coming out on the global side this week. Uh, he has incredible TMRs, a unique limit break. He kind of has everything. So let's go ahead and dig in. We're going to start off by talking about Oberon's TMR. The Dragon Fang Pauldrons is an armor type TMR with HP 449, Defense 8, Spirit 8, and Critical Hit Rate 10. Now, you might not think that this is anything to sneeze at until you look at the ability, which is the most unique ability in the game of War Divisions so far. Has the ability to nullify haste for enemies, decrease critical hit rate 20 for two turns to enemies, and it'll increase your attack 40% for three turns to self. The one thing here that you might not realize, this hits the entire arena. It doesn't matter where your opponents are at. You're going to nullify haste for them, and you're going to decrease critical hit rate 20 for two turns. Plus, with an attack buff on yourself, it kind of categorizes itself literally as the most unique TMR in the game. It's the only TMR so far, I believe, that actually affects the entire arena, and I really hope that they add more TMRs like this. His mastery ability increases the standard HP 10% and Earth Attack 15% for Earth allies. Then on top of that, it gives him another HP 10% and single target resistance 10 for himself. He's really walking down that Dragoon Brawler Alley that we've almost seen Victoria walk down in the past. We've seen Kane go down a very similar kind of Brawler-esque capability. His limit break is, I would argue, one of the most unique limit breaks in the game. The reason for this is because it decreases all elemental resistances 20% for three turns to target, has very high range, it's AoE, and it's a 200% modifier damage attack. The reason this is important is because there is not very many ways in the game to decrease the stat that is all elemental attack resistance down. Most units, the only way you're going to get this is through Imperil. And the reason this is important is because all elemental attack resistance down stacks with elemental resistance down effects. So you could have lightning attack resistance down and you could also have all elemental attack resistance down stacking together to give a significant elemental advantage against the opponent. So Oberon is basically a unit with its limit break, which will fit really good, not only in mono earth combinations, but any formation that decreases the opponent's resistances. And he'll fit really well into rainbow compositions because he's going to be able to decrease all elemental resistances for all units in the party. So he is a universally good unit to have and to have his limit break maxed out. Now, taking a look at his stats and kind of everything else going on here, he does have a base of about 4,300 HP, which is what you would expect from kind of a brawler. Defense 8, attack 496, nothing, you know, nothing really standing out is like this is the dominant stat. He does have 66 agility, which is nice. Critical hit rate 28, which is great. Of course, we're going to be, you know, with a critical hit rate that high, with critical hit rate on his TMR, and with the ability of his TMR to lower critical hit rate of the opponent's critical hit is something we're going to be looking at when we do build him. Uh, he has 10% slash resistance, 5% pierce resistance, and he does come with 15% resistance to missiles. So with Jaden kind of dominating in all these different missile combinations in the world, he will be pretty universally good against them. His only weakness is 10% magic, 10% weakness to win. However, he's going to be up in the air so much, I almost wonder if he's going to be able to dodge some of these weaknesses. In terms of stat rankings, he does have the 10th highest HP. He has the 25th highest attack, 23rd highest agility, dexterity 44th, luck 58th, which is a little unfortunate since of course with a lot of earth units we do run evasion. Uh, AP is gonna come in at 50th and kind of a mock build of him. We had 7,600 HP, 19 defense, 100 agility. Uh, Dexterity coming in only at 337, but what's important here is he does have plus 55 critical hit rate, just in terms of his gear and kind of what we can put on him. So he will have a reasonably good chance to crit against the opponent. 
He also has Luck 318, which is not the highest, but he may potentially be able to dodge an attack or two. And his starting AP is gonna come in at about 32 out of 185. Now, we do have the Stag, Esper, and Vision card on him. And I can never say that Esper's name, Elphalocalus, I believe it is. I was literally trying to say that Esper's name five times fast earlier. Uh, trying to <laughs> trying to get ready for this video and I just can never it's gonna be one of those names I can never produce uh, but whether he comes out this week or whether he comes out next week he's a must get vision card in Esper not only for Oberon but for any earth unit that's going to be released in the future now in terms of supports and counters uh, he does have the ability uh, Tracer, which of course does exactly what you think it does. Um, it does upgrade the skill Soaring Dragon Spear. So if we come down here, um, you can see that Soaring Dragon Spear uh, decreases Pierce Resistance 25% for three turns, 185% modifier, and then it does make itself a tracking jump. So he will be able to do uh, very similar to Christmas Mastery, where she's able to jump and track the opponent. Uh, Going to be very cool. I kind of would. I kind of want the synergy of this plus Christmas Mastery's jump ability. I think this also makes much more of a case for uh, not having decreased activation time on jumps, right? Because the jump is actually an invulnerability window. So if you can find a way to increase your activation time with jump tracking, it could actually be a really good thing. Uh, in terms of the other passives that he has on him, all of them are pretty good. Viking lore for HP and attack. Dragon Spear Mastery, you're probably going to be setting for attack 24%, defense penetration 40. However, I could see a lot of people setting Night Blade Mastery for that attack 30%, accuracy 25, with kind of the dominance of evasion units in the game right now. I could also see Unyielding Protection being set for missile resistance plus 15% right now. So kind of a lot of different combinations you could run with him. It's going to probably heavily depend on what you're specifically targeting. And of course, Oberon being a general unit in the pool and a brawler-esque character, I think you're gonna be using him in a variety of formations to hunt a variety of opponents. Uh, the counter, the only one you're going to wanna to set is going to be the Purple Dragon's Blade, which is exactly what you think it is. It is a 20% chance to proc, 121% piercing attack drain HP ability. Of course, most Dragoons have this Drain HP ability, and it is very important to set one of their most important... I would say it's very role-defining defining at this point in Wotif, right? Like Dragoons, they have Drain HP, and they have Jumping abilities. And I would say, you know, we kind of see that with Oberon. In terms of his primary kit, uh, Halting Spear is going to be 126% modifier, 25% chance to inflict stop for 30 turns, uh, and it's going to have increased range when it does get upgraded. Uh, this is going to bring stop back a little bit, I think, uh, in terms of what faith you want to run Oberon at. Little iffy here, because he does have magic weakness and little Leela is out. I'm going to say, just be aware of this. We may, like, it would be nice if we got Ribbon back uh, in order to try and prevent you know, let these stops from landing, but just be aware, he does have access to stop in close range. Purple Dragon's Providence is a critical evasion 30, AOE resistance 15 buff for him and allies. I actually think you're gonna turn this off. I don't think, I think he has other buffs that you're gonna be prioritizing. And I think, especially if you go like sub Nightblade, you might be prioritizing uh, kind of like double resist um, or something like that. Uh, Royal Renin, 25% chance to inflict stun. Now, this is like a shotgun stun attack with two range in front of him. I think you leave this on. The question now is, do you, again, level his faith to have an increased chance of this landing? The attack range on it is so weird because it's two to the side, two forward. So it's almost, it's an attack type that we've never really seen before. And it's a two hit strike. So keep that in mind. A purple dragon shield reduces damage taken 50% for three times to self. That's damage taken. That's not physical damage taken. It's all damage taken. So very powerful here as long as your opponent doesn't have a shield bypass. And then, of course, it gets upgraded to have pierce attack plus 25, which makes it probably the best buff that he can pop here. Um, and you're probably going to want him to pop this instead of maybe doing that critical evasion AOE resistance. Uh, soaring dragon spear we talked about decreases pierce resistance. And then thunder smite. Lightning Killer 25X, 200% modifier attack with a 100% hit chance is pretty 
powerful. Uh, that's going to be dealing... That's going to kill a lot of evasion units right there. Having a 200% mod attack. It is only two range though, so you're not going to get too close. If you do end up subbing Young Dragon King, you're going to be using Subjugating Spear, which decreases Earth Resistance 30%. And this is really like... Oberon has the kit, very similar to Dwayne where if you're going into a raid formation or any type of pve content where you are need to decrease resistances oberon literally has like decrease earth resistance decrease all elemental resistance decrease pierce resistance right like the only thing he's really missing is decreased defense and he has multi-strike attacks so i mean like he's going to be incredible uh in pve and i just think he's going to be absolutely one of those units that you know, if you're like a newer player and you're wanting like a new brawler unit to help you in PvE situations, Oberon is absolutely going to be that unit. Uh, in terms of sub jobs, now it, it's kind of, I mean, I would say there's only two reasons uh, that you run these different subs. You have sub Viking and you have sub Nightblade. Uh, sub Viking, you're really only going to sub Viking for launch, killing axe, and the capability to slash chain, right? And you might run this maybe when Agion comes out. Maybe you're going to run this where he chains with GL Zazan and Ketone, right? And maybe you want him to slash chain. So you want you have him do his limit break or something. I don't know, because it might even be better for him just to lower earth resistance and do his pierce attacks. Again, sub Viking, I think probably not going to happen. Uh, sub Nightblade, uh, again, it's with his buff. So you're only really going to sub Nightblade for double resist, for that pierce resistance, for that missile resistance. Uh, plus 25% on pierce and missile resistance AOE is pretty good. Little unfortunate though that we don't see the triple hit attack from Nightblade. You could theoretically put Exorcist on Oberon because he does have access to sub Nightblade and use triple trick to chain slash. But again, he has so many other utility options in his kit. I just don't think you're gonna be doing that. Uh, finally, in terms of Espers, you're gonna be setting Alophagalus. <laughs> Say that four times, Lophagalus, 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 Lophagalus. Um, I will get his name down, Lophagalus. Uh, probably the best Esper in the game whenever he does come out. I'm not sure if it's this week or the following week. But he has incredible agility at 19 agility, 103 attack. Probably the, I actually think he is the highest agility Esper in the game besides Odin and Bahamut. So he's going to be universally incredible. He has attack up, he has earth attack up, he has missile resistance, he has pierce attack up. So like universally... You know, if you're an Earth Pierce unit, you're going to be running this. Uh, if you want Missile Resistance and Earth Attack Up and Attack Up, you're going to be running this, right? Uh, this could be potentially best in slot for like GL Zazat, right? Uh, you know, just don't invest in the Pierce Attack. Go for Missile Resistance. Go for Critical Damage, right? Go for something like that. Like there's, like this is a universally amazing Esper. And I think the last Esper we saw that was kind of similar to this was Fry Zess. And I think Elphalocalus definitely, is that his name? Oh my God, did I say it wrong? Alophagalus. I think Alophagalus is like, you should be hyped for him. I think everybody should pull for him. He's going to be absolutely incredible. He also has disabled resistance 25%. So anyway, everybody, I hope you guys like this video. Um, we are going to go ahead and finish up right now. If you do want to support me, you can use my affiliate link, dig.gs slash coins or dig.gs slash offer. I will be on stream Tuesday night. Um, I'm not sure I'll be pulling for Oberon yet uh, because he is in the general pool. I think there's a case to be made not to pull for him. I do think universally, though, most people will want him. So with that said, have a great rest of your day and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening, guys.